What's up people, class is in session. This is Professor Ganymede. In this video, we're gonna do another analysis of one of DSP Stinky's games. This is gonna be uh, on King of the Hill, where I think um, DSP Stinky really shines. His play style of being hyper-aggressive um, and, and also being extra survivable really shines. So we're actually gonna to try to focus on um, just what he does to survive, and that's a big part of Lucio's kit, is his ability to get kills and his ability to survive. So, let's actually break it down. Let's get into it. I'm going to mute the sound for look at my voice. So, the game starts. He's on Legion Tower. He's going to move in, speed his team in. And he jumps off the wall and just starts shooting. He does that a lot. He likes to jump off the wall and start shooting from the wall, from elevation, which is what I like to see. Oh, uh, Tracer moves behind his team and uh, takes down his his back lines and yada. Then he jumps on the Lucio, gets that kill by himself because he's a, you know, because you know, gotta get gotta get secure those kills. So he took he takes out their support. Um, just gotta get the knockback on the Tracer. Oh no, the Gendry. And then he gets that kill on Gendry. Got it. If you want to carry his Lucio, you got to you got to get those kills, guys. That's why I'm practicing my aim here. And now look look how he uses this Siller Pillar to just kind of um. Just uh, dodge the damages from like at least two people there. Um, knocks them all back, disrupt their aim. Now he sees the Gendry, the the Winston on him, and he speed amps out of the way, and then he just comes back. Um, <laughs> he's able to just turn around and get all four headshots on that Roadhog, um, and he was just surviving there. He didn't get hit by the hook. He's always watching out for the hook, um, and. Yeah, like not dying in this situation is just gonna be so helpful. Of course, of course, securing your, the kills on your own is helpful, but also being able to survive using your movement uh, and proper management of your crossfade uh, switching also helps out. So now he's playing a little bit more defensive here, um, making sure he's not gonna die. He's actually playing behind his team here. All right, now he's gonna speed his team up with an amp because his Reinhardt, he's gonna commit with his Reinhardt and focus on the, the Anna, get that kill on the Anna. Um, then doing the damages, he has really good aim. That's one of the things, you always notice the higher level Lucio's have good aim. Because if you don't secure kills, you're not gonna carry. So he has to have good aim. And like, if, if, if DSP Stanky was, was everything was the same except DP, DSP Stanky couldn't hit his shots, he would not be as high as this. But he hits his shots and gets those kills. Um, and now once it jumps in, he's just gonna shoot down at the shield. Gotta shoot at the shield. Um, as long as there's nothing else to do. Um, now the enemy comes in with the beat and he drops the beat of his own and then he kind of combines it with the Zyana. Um, not sure if that was the most efficient, but hey, it worked. He secured the point here. Now that the McCree gets him really low, look how he plays this. He just kind of, he, he listens for the McCree and just kind of line sides the McCree. <laughs> And then he's able to get out, um, and he's all focused. And then just run into McCree's face and shoot him. <laughs> they just collapse on that McCree because McCree, uh, I believe the McCree generates two hundred and twenty-five damage per second with his high noons. So they had a whole second to kill him before he'd actually get into kill range for them. Boom, and then. He speeds his, he actually speeds his teammate out of there, so he protects his team, always protecting his team, and getting the damages on the D.Va. Never the D.Va, knocks back the Lucio, trying to protect his team, but the guy dies anyway. And there's a, there's a soldier, oh, you guys can't hear. Um, moves back, now let's see how he plays this. Is he going to retreat? Yeah, he's going to actually go and tr protect his tracer, or yeah, the, protect his tracer from that Anna, and get, again, yeah, secure the kill on him. Secure that kill. Hitting those shots. Getting that kill. Um, now he protects his tracer from the McCree and the other person as well. Knocking them back. So that, that there he actually saved his teammates. Which is nice. Actually saved that tracer's life. Now it's Reinhardt. He's going to actually move in with his team again. Right next to his Reinhardt. Very close up. And uh, he sees that Roadhog is ulting. So that's a great opportunity to get damages on that ult. On that Roadhog. Drops the beat, and you notice that he drops the beat a lot just to push his team forward. He doesn't do it in combo with his team, even though the you know a lot of people say you should save your ultimate for combining it with your team. But with him being in such high um, high rank, I think I'm not sure if he's top 500 here. Um, he can do that because 
Uh, he can drop the beat because specifically his team is good enough to actually capitalize on the beat. Like he knows his team are going to use that 500 health shell instead of like a lower rank. You know, your team will like sit back and waste it. He knows that his team's going to go in, so he will drop the beat very, um, to initiate a lot. But that's probably that's probably just because of how high rank he is. So I wouldn't. Um, I probably wouldn't advocate for that a lot. I probably I would say, you know, until you hit like these high coordinated games, prioritize comboing uh, with your team or prioritize countering an enemy ult. I think I do want to watch this. So let's let's analyze the second game. Here he comes in, drops the damages down. He dodges the fire strike. It's very no no. Do note that he did not get hit by that fire strike. That's all. That's always very important to reduce the amount of uh um. Ultimate charge the enemy right hard gets uh, five strikes on a six second cooldown. So yes, just constantly make sure you're not getting hit by that. Uh, he tries to shoot at the Rohog while the Rohog is, um, you know, sipping that whatever he sips so he can get his health back. Because you know that Rohog it takes I believe 1.5 seconds for that to, that heal to to finish. Two 1.5 seconds or two. I have to check that. Uh, but he knows he's not he's not under threat while he's shooting uh, during Rohog's heal. But he does get caught by the Rohog hook. Um, so it does happen. Even the best players get caught by that goddamn road hot hook. That that hook is super annoying. And then look how he gets back in the combat. Look at the look how he uses the the top of that pillar and then the top of that roof to speed himself and bunny hop back to combat. And he's just gonna kind of shoot damage. And he's actually hitting those shots. You know, he isn't just like spamming in the general direction. He's actually aiming at a specific area where he thinks the enemy is gonna be. Um, and they try to run across the bridge here. And you actually notice that. Hey, look, yeah, he Tim get knocked out, but the way he moves, like just no, just look at how, bam, the way he moved into the room was uh, pretty nice. But um, again, the roadhog hooks OP. The roadhog hooks are OP. I wonder. I think this is around. This is actually a really close game. This might be around. He actually loses, but it's all. It's also nice to see. Um, uh, a loss because you see how he deals with the loss and what he does when he does when his team is behind. You know his team isn't always like smashing the enemy team. He's he's behind sometimes. So he actually runs immediately into the soldier um, to calls out to the soldier as well. There's a lot of ultimates going down. Let's see where he focuses. He's shooting damage on the uh, Lucio, and then he drops the beat in order to help his team win the fight. And then he gets uh, switched to the Anna because of the supports. He knows that he's behind that pillar, so he's not going to get hit by the D.Va ultimate. He doesn't even have to look. And he goes in there, gets the app on his team and, and himself, get the app on that Torbjorn. And they're actually able to push for the win here. Like, they actually push that for the win. And then get, just, he heard the Roadhog around the corner, turn around, just got the easy, easy knockoff on that Roadhog. I like the I like his positioning here, why he's positioning in this windowsill. I really got to practice this because he, he has a lot of really cool positions. This is, I have to practice this. I love what he does here. Um, where he just kind of uses these two walls to bounce back and forth and get line of sight. And then when he wants to, he can move forward. Um, I'm not I think maybe he wins this game. I, I can't remember. I know it was two. I know it is two to three. Uh, so I know it was close. Yeah, so like, I love how he does this. I need to practice this. He, he has a lot of these neat little you know wall riding tricks. And I'm going to practice them individually. And then he moves in with his tracer and um, and gets that secures that kill with soldier. He actually does more damage to that soldier than tracer did. <laughs> because uh, tra right. Now he's going to move in and get the knockback. Um, he's probably sli sliding along that top railing. And then he's going to go back to the same position. See if he can find an opportunity. Get the knockback again. And the other Lucio knocks him off, but then he knocked the other Lucio off. So they both knocked each other off. Um, but that position, uh, how he's able to just fall out of line of sight and throw down harass damage and get a good line of sight on an enemy team without like being in a vulnerable, like on the ground exposed position, like that position is really nice. And pretty much everyone should learn that that, that kind of Lucio uh, wall running trick or location there. The hooks lands on that other Roadhog. And he's going to move in again, see if he can get the epic. Yep, there you go. The epic knockback. Got to secure those skills. That's how, he's gonna, that's how you're going to carry it. Securing those skills any way you can. There you go. And he actually knocked the Genji away from his Reinhardt when he was you know, using that Dragon Blade. Still doing a little protection dance there. And here he just gets... Um, he was actually trying to be a little bit aggressive on that um, soldier. Because just because soldier ultimate doesn't mean you have to you know hide. You can still attack him. He still only has 200 health. And he, he does win this round. Okay, good. 
I thought he was going to lose this round, but he loses the next round. Um, he, he loses the next round, but not this round. So that was actually pretty nice. Um, he was securing those kills, man. He was securing those kills. He got to secure those kills. So that was another round on. Uh, this is a. Uh, yeah, this was Lingon Tower. I noticed that. Um, you know, he does secure the kills. He's a lot less aggressive than I think people think he is. But he's still hyper-aggressive. And he, if he wasn't securing those kills, I, I said it a thousand times, he would not be carrying. He would not be carrying if he wasn't securing those kills. Um, and the survival helps. He can he could be as survival as he can. He have as many wall-running skills as he can. If he was not fighting those epic plays to knock people uh, to knock people off the map and getting those headshots and securing the kills in the back line, he would not be winning these games. Um, so that's... So what you gotta do is Lucio if you wanna win, guys. If you wanna carry this, what you gotta do. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. This has been Professor Gadamine. Thanks for watching. Class dismissed.